Before I start with today's video, I'd first like to thank my viewers for all their support. My channel now has almost 30,000 subscribers, and I average around 60 new subscribers each day. I would especially like to thank my subscribers, which have gone the extra mile in order to help my channel to grow by sharing and posting links to my videos. It is that kind of support which greatly encourages me to produce more quality videos. Once again, thank you all for your support. Now on to today's project. The circuit that you're looking at I designed for leak prevention. Now you can use this in your utility room, you could use it for your washer and dryer, it could be used like in my case, it's going to be used under the sink, on the cold water supply line leading to the kitchen sink, the reverse osmosis system, and the ice maker line. In the event that one of those lines begins to leak and causes a little puddle or a line breaks and sprays water out, what's going to happen, it's going to land on this plate that I designed. If you look carefully, this trace wraps all the way around. This one here is along the bottom and you have fingers crisscrossing back and forth. Just like this, you have your fingers like that. And the closer the spacing is between each one of these fingers, the higher the level of sensitivity is going to be in the event of a leak. Now I put one on the top and I also made one for the bottom. You can see there's a little dab of solder on each corner and the purpose of that is to let the plate be slightly elevated off of a hard surface such as tile so in the event that water leaks and starts flowing in it'll easily be drawn under that plate through capillary action causing the circuit to trigger immediately. Now in order to make this leak detection plate you see right here all I did was take copper clad board, a ruler and a sharpie pen and I created all the lines like you saw right there and then I etched it. If you're unfamiliar with creating boards like this you're going to want to check out my PC board video which is right here in this link. You can click on that link a new window will open which you can pause when you're finished watching this video you can then watch the other video. You will learn exactly how these PC boards are made with the acid etching process. Now the alarm is a piezo siren. This I got at Radio Shack. They were going out of business. It was 50% off. I only paid $2.99 for this. It is extremely loud. I think it's around 105 decibels and it draws around 140 milliamps. Now if you don't have access to a siren like this, I do have another circuit on my YouTube channel and you can check that link out right here as well. Remember the link will open in a new window, you pause it, go back to this video, when this video is finished, then you can go back to that video to learn how to make the siren. This housing I found at the dump, it was a ballast. You're going to see this in another video called Treasures from the Trash. I ended up gutting it out because I liked the housing so much for this project. This is waterproof, I sealed it. This could be bolted onto the wall using the plastic anchors and the screw. You could screw this one in and have it slide over on that side. Once it's screwed in, then on this side you could drill the hole and put the screw directly in and mount this on the wall. It would be mounted just like this, so any water spraying would go to the top, run down the side, and have no effect on the piezo siren because that'll be facing in a different direction from the water. And your on-off button power indicating LED and test button will be located on the bottom. If you don't have a housing like this, there are many other housings you can purchase. Radio Shack has some or you can even find many online. The power transformer I used is a 12 volt, in this case 750 milliamp transformer. It's not regulated. The output is around 18.5 to 19 volts open circuit. When a load is applied, it then drops down to around 12. The wire I used is all 18 or 20 gauge wire. It does not have to be a heavy gauge because in this case, with this solenoid, it's only drawing around 300 milliamps, so a 20 gauge wire is sufficient. 
and the wire leading over to the sensor. That could be 20, 22 gauge, even a little smaller because there's only going to be extremely low current through that sensor board wire. This solenoid valve is a half inch valve. It's a normally open. I just made a video showing exactly how this operates. Once again, if you would like to see that video, you know the routine. The link is right over here. What I did to this plastic valve, which is rated up to 125 PSI, is I added these fittings which I made. I brazed them together. I added 3 8 inch connectors so I could use it under my sink. It'll connect right in. And as soon as this circuit is triggered by even the smallest droplet of water, the siren is going to come on, blaring extremely loud, and this solenoid is going to trigger, shutting off the supply of water. Once the circuit's been triggered, you could turn off the water, and then you could turn off the unit. Once the issue has been resolved, which caused the water leak, you can then dry that plate thoroughly. If it's not thoroughly dry, the siren will still trigger. Make sure you dry it thoroughly, and then you can turn the power back on, which is there. The purpose of the self-test button is to ensure that all the components of the system are working properly. All that happens when you push this button is you are basically just shorting out the sensor plate, and by doing so, if everything else is working properly, the transistors and the buzzer and the solenoid, when you push it, you will hear the siren blare. You can hold your hand on the solenoid, hear it click at the same time. Once you let go of the button, everything goes back to normal, and the circuit is on standby, waiting for a potential leak. What I'm going to do now is show you the schematic. and move all these parts. The circuit uses a 12 volt 500 milliamp wall transformer, which is unregulated. In a minute, I'll tell you the changes you can make if you have a regulated output 12 volt DC transformer. The 12 volt DC coming from the wall transformer connects to an on off switch. Then it goes to this point here. From this point right here, it's going to flow through a PPTC, which is a poly switch, which is a resettable fuse. Basically how this works, if too much current flows through that component, it gets hot as the temperature rises, so does the resistance to extremely high levels to the point where this component will no longer conduct. If you would like a better understanding of how these poly switch PPTCs work, I have a video you can check out right here, and after watching that video and all the demonstrations, you'll know exactly how they work. Once the current flows through the PPTC, you have a 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitor on the inside of the LM7812 voltage regulator. Middle pin is ground. The output has a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor to ground. After that, the output continues on and it goes into the relay coil of a 12 volt 3 amp small relay. Now the relay that I used has a coil resistance of between 500 and 700 ohms and the contacts like I said are rated at 3 amps which is more than enough even if you're using two solenoids. Across that relay coil you have a back EMF diode which is a 1N4003 diode. You could use anything from 4003 and higher. The power continues on to this power indicating LED on the unit with a 2.7K resistor in series to ground. So when the switch is on, the power flows through the PPTC, through the voltage regulator, and the power rail goes into the relay coil and into the power indicating LED. Also from the power rail, you have a 470K ohm resistor going into the collector of a 2N3904 or a BC547 type transistor, NPN. You could use a KSP 2222A. There's a bunch that you can use. The one that I used was a 2N3904. The emitter goes around and ties into the base of an NTE128, which is also a 2N1711. That's an NPN as well. 
emitter to ground, the base of the 2N3904 has a 27.4K resistor and that goes to one lead of the sensor plates. The collector of the NTE128 goes into the other side of the relay coil. So you have power going into the relay coil and you have power leaving into the collector and the relay is triggered when this transistor is turned on. Power from the output of the regulator also goes into the common terminal of the relay. The normally closed you don't connect anything to. The normally open that wire will go out and go into the solenoid valve. I also have another 1N4003 diode across that solenoid winding. When power is no longer applied to that winding, when the magnetic field collapses, I don't have to risk any damage to the piezo siren, which is in parallel with the solenoid. After that, that goes to ground. The positive rail also goes up and around to the other sensor plate wire and in between this sensor terminal here and this one there is a normally open momentary push button. This is the one that you push down and it connects these two together to test the entire circuit to make sure it's working properly. Now if you're using more than one solenoid you're going to want to use a 12 volt 1 amp power supply. You're going to want to swap out the RXEF 050 component, which is the poly switch, with a RLD30P090UF, and that would be used with a 1 amp power supply. Keep in mind, this circuit could be used to shut down the entire house. You could go out and purchase a 3 quarter inch valve, like I'm using in this video, which probably draws around 500-600 milliamps, connect that to your city water supply to the house, which is the cold, and place one or more sensor plates in certain areas of your home. If any of those sensor plates get wet, what will happen, it will shut off the water to the entire house, and that means hot and cold. You can get by using one large valve, a three-quarter inch, to do your whole house. If you have a 12-volt wall transformer which gives you a regulated 12 volt output then you could ditch the LM7812 regulator you're going to want to make sure you keep the poly switch it's for overcurrent protection and in the event something gets shorted you don't want to have the shorted wires burning up your 7812 or burning up your transformer the PPTC will heat up causing the resistance to go extremely high and maybe a few milliamps will only be flowing until the problem with the circuit has been corrected and then this will cool down and normal current will resume through the circuit. So with that regulated supply you're going to leave just the poly switch, you're going to eliminate the 470, you're going to eliminate the voltage regulator and I would leave the 100 microfarad. I'm also going to be posting a link to this schematic in the video description area so you can print out a copy for yourself when you go to put the circuit together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a demonstration of how well this circuit works. Alright, the unit is set up outside. It's a little windy, so you may hear some wind noise unfortunately. Control box is right here. We power it up. There's the power indicator. I'm going to push the test button and you're going to hear how loud the siren is. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the water on. It's going to be shooting out of the left side of that valve. I'm going to get my hand damp. I'm going to shake my hand on that plate and the alarm's going to come on and the water is going to turn off. I'm going to put some water on my hand. All right. Now I'm going to take my hand, a little wet, and just shake it on that plate. And as you can see, it is super sensitive. And you would not turn that switch off until you corrected the leak first. That's right.
turn it on again. All right, we're good to go. Let's get a little bit of a water leak going. We're gonna let it run downhill right under the plate. And of course, it's missing the plate. As you can see, it works incredibly well, so hopefully this circuit will help others. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much for watching.